So here we have our first example that we're going to work using Kirchhoff's rules. Now, what we're doing here is determining the current through the voltage across and the power dissipated by each one of the resistors in this circuit. Looking at this circuit, um, you can conclude easily that equivalent resistance um, would be a sufficient tool to analyze this circuit, and that's true. But I picked this circuit because I want to try something simple. Uh, in my class, I've already done this example using equivalent resistance. We can compare the two methods and see, um, compare and contrast their uh, mechanics. So the first thing you always do when you're analyzing a circuit, that's the first thing I always do, is I label my currents. And the first current I always label is the current coming out of the battery, or batteries, if I have multiple batteries. Uh, so I label it I0, and I get to this junction, and now I have two new currents to deal with. I'll have I1 and I2. Once I have my currents labeled, I make sure to label my junction here. I label that J1. I could label this junction J2. I'll label it, but we'll see if we actually need it. Next, we label the loops. I'll label the loop incorporating the 12 volt uh, voltage source as well as the 40 and 60 ohm resistors. I'm going to label that loop A. And I'll label this one loop B. And I could label this entire loop the outer rim, the perimeter of my circle, uh, circuit, loop C, but I'm not sure I'll need that. I'll label it just in case I do. Let me know that loop C comes around this way. Now I'm going to apply the uh, two rules to this circuit and see what happens. First, the junction rule. The junction rule, uh, as applied to J1, is going to give us I0 is equal to I1 plus I2. Um, and if you look at junction 2, you see that I1 is the current going into J2. I2 is the current going into J2. So we have I1 plus I2 going in. I0 coming out, which is identical to what junction 1 gave us. I0 going in, I1 and I2 coming out. Now we look at the loop rule. Uh, loop rule as applied to loop A is going to tell us, well, where are we going to start? I like to start at the upper, upper left hand corner of my loops just because it's simplest for me. English is my native language and we always read top to bottom, left to right. So we'll start here. It doesn't matter where you start, um, but I start here and then I go across until I find a component. No component yet, I get to junction one, I have to come down because I'm addressing loop A. I get to the 40 ohm resistor, and we have our first voltage drop. I know it's a drop because I2 is going down, and I'm traveling down as I analyze the circuit clockwise. Uh, so I'm traveling with the current across the 40 ohm resistor, so I have a negative voltage, and I could label it negative V sub 40 ohm, but I'm just gonna use Ohm's law and say negative I, 2 times 40 ohms. That's the voltage drop across the resistor. I continue down, I get to the 60 ohm resistor. I'm following the current, so it is another voltage drop. Again, I'm going to use the Ohm's law to describe it. 60 ohms. I get to the bottom here, come this way. I get to the battery. Now the battery, I'm traveling from low to high, negative to positive. And when I do that, that means I have a voltage lift. So it's going to be a positive voltage here, so positive 12 volts. And then I get back to where I started. I can set that equal to zero. So I'll move this over here just so I have a little bit of room. Now I apply the loop rule to loop B, starting in the upper left-hand corner again. Move this way, down this way. I get to the 80 ohm resistor. Now I'm traveling, let's see, I'm traveling with I1. And when you travel with the current across the resistor, it's a negative voltage. So I have negative I1 times 80 ohms. I get to the bottom right hand corner. I have the junction 2. 
Now I go up this leg. Ooh, this time I'm opposing I2 because I'm traveling up. Remember, I'm traveling clockwise with my loop. But I'm opposing I2, and since I'm opposing, it's going to be a positive voltage. So positive I2 times 60 ohms. I continue on up the leg. Now I get to the 40 ohm resistor, and I'm traveling against the current again. So it's another positive I2 times the 40 ohm, and I get back to where I started, equal to zero. Now I have three equations from Kirchhoff's rules and three unknowns. That has one solution for each of the quantities, and all I need to do now is some algebra. But to clean it up a little bit, I'm going to do something that's um, a little unconventional when dealing with physics, and that is I'm going to abandon the units. Well, let's not say abandon. I'm going to put them aside for a moment and address them at the end of the problem. See, this is kind of hairy in terms of analyzation, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these equations without the units associated with them. So, well, the junction rule is just the same. I0 is equal to I1 plus I2. The loop rule as applied to loop A, loop A gives us negative 40 I2 minus negative 60. Well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine those two terms. It's going to make it a little easier on me. Minus 60 minus 40, that gives me minus 100. I2 plus 12, again, I'm setting aside the units, equals 0. And for loop B, I have minus 80 I1. I have a plus 60 and plus 40 I2. I'm going to combine those terms into plus 100 I2. And set that equal to 0. And now I have what I refer to as a toolbox. These tools are going to help me solve for I0, I1, and I2. And all it takes is some algebraic manipulation. Specifically, uh, solving for one of those, plugging it into another equation, and if you need needs B, solving again and plugging it into a third equation. This one I see that I can solve for I2 really quickly. And when I have I2, I'll plug that into this equation, giving me I1, and then I'll plug it into the first equation, and it'll give me I0. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead to the answers. You can plug that stuff in on your own and double check my work. Um, but once we have our answers for current, then we'll address the other quantities that we're looking for, namely voltage and power.